Hello everyone and welcome to the Mylia Photos Coffee Break. My name is Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about using a cloud service for off-site storage with Mylia Photos. Today I'm also joined by Lori Rubin. She is going to be helping out in the chat. Also a product evangelist for Mylia. That's what we both do. We're here to make sure you guys are successful and she'll be sharing some links as we go through with different things that'll be helpful for additional information on the topics we're discussing. So let's go ahead and jump into today's topic which is using a cloud service for offsite storage. So for those of you who are fairly new to Mylio, you might not know that you can use cloud with Mylio. So Mylio in and itself is not a cloud service, but you can use the cloud with Mylio. So if you're wondering about media that you already have on the cloud and how to get that into Mylio, we talked about that last week in our previous coffee break, and I do hope you'll go back and watch that. You can find it in the community if you go down here to event replays, coffee breaks, and add media to photo, um, add media to Mylio photos from a cloud service. We talked about all of the things from the built-in options like bringing in your social media photos to um, more obscure things like bringing things in from Dropbox or existing files that you have on OneDrive or some other locations. Those aren't directly integrated in Mylio, but it can certainly be done. And I walked you through how to do that in this session. So if those are the questions you have, please feel free to go back and watch that session. I think we covered a lot of good stuff. So I hope that's helpful. Today, what we're going to be talking about is offsite storage. So once you have your media into Mylio photos, we want to be able to have a place offsite to store our stuff. So we're going to talk about the cloud. So in general, um, just a very simplistic definition. You can go ahead and dive into more research on this if you like. But if you're not that technical, the cloud is essentially hard drives that live somewhere else. So they're in data centers around the world, different companies that host these, control them, maintain them, and your data is on their servers at an offsite location. So that's essentially what the cloud is. It's not something like up ethereal in the sky. It's just data centers elsewhere. So whether you're having hard drives on your desk at home or hard drives at an offsite location using these data centers with the cloud, either way is, is good. And we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of why you might want to use the cloud and how it's helpful. So using the cloud has both pros and cons. And this is a very personal choice. But one of the reasons that I like it and I find it useful is it does provide an offsite storage option. So why would you want something offsite? Well, when you have things only in your house, you can have multiple vaults backing up your copies of your photos and have really good protection at home. But if somebody breaks into your house and steals your stuff or a natural disaster hits, something terrible happens, or maybe you have even a catastrophic failure across your computers and connected drives. Bad stuff can happen. Like I don't want to be like the harbinger of doom here, but you know it's good to have a copy somewhere else other than in your home, and the cloud is one way to do that. And for most of us, it's it's the easiest way to do it. Um, if you have an offsite office or a family member whose home you can have a vault at and have Miley running at their place, um, that's also a great option for offsite. But for most of us, the easiest is going to be to use the cloud, and it protects us against natural disaster, theft, and hardware failure. It also helps with accessibility. So if you don't have a computer to leave on at home connected to a vault all the time, if you're out and about on your tablet or your phone and you want to pull down a full quality image for some reason, having a cloud vault can do that. So it can make things much more accessible. Now, some of the downsides to using the cloud, the first one a lot of people run into is the price. So the more data you upload, the more expensive it gets. Another one we hear frequently and a lot of reasons people come to Mylio and don't want to use the cloud is because they have concerns about security and privacy. And every company that you can work with is a little bit different, but they all have different you know, levels of security and privacy with your data. Um, there's also bandwidth issues, so it requires a stable internet connection. Um, and one thing I learned over the past few years is that not all online or internet services that you might have for your home offer unlimited data. Now, the data caps are really pretty high, but if you have a large library and you're wanting to upload that to a cloud service, you might actually hit that data threshold and get an unpleasant bill from your provider. The other thing they might do is slow or throttle your connection to where everything in your house, all of your connections slow down, and that can be really frustrating. So that's something to consider when you're uploading a lot of data to a cloud service. The other thing is if you have to access that 
offsite backup, let's say you have that horrible hardware failure or natural disaster, um, if you if your only place you have to, to restore that from is the cloud, the download can take quite a long time. So it's just something to think of and be aware of as you consider whether or not you want to put things into the cloud. So one thing I want to emphasize with Mylia Photos is using the cloud is 100% optional. The cloud is not a perfect solution for everyone, but it can be useful. So I want to emphasize that Mylio is not a cloud. And if you want to use the cloud with Mylio, it is completely up to you. So let's talk a bit about how the cloud works with Mylio Photo Storage. So what we prioritize is local storage. When you get started with Mylio, the first thing we're going to ask you is, do you have a vault? And ideally, we'd like you to set up at least two vaults. So those are going to be for most people, an external hard drive. You'll have two of them sitting on your desk connected to your computer. And those two devices are essentially mirrored and hold your entire library. So you have two copies sitting on your desk at home. So we prioritize that local storage and it's storage that you control that's in your hands, it's tangible, it's not off in some data center around the world. The other thing we really emphasize is privacy. So a lot of our clients really value their privacy. They wanna keep their data secure. And that is one of the most important things to us. So when you use the cloud with Mylio, we have options for encryption and ways that you can help keep your data safe. Um, you also have that option to not use the cloud and keep everything pers uh, perfectly private. So personal choice is where all of this comes in. Using the cloud is optional. Data encryption, so when you send your stuff from Mylio to the cloud, you, that encryption is optional. And one of the things that's really unique about Mylio and the way that it works with the cloud is you can choose what is saved in the cloud. Now, if you set it up as a vault, that's gonna be everything in your entire library. That's gonna be your catalog, your thumbnails, your optimized images, and your original quality media. But if you don't wanna put all that up there because maybe it's pretty expensive, maybe you have a huge library and you don't wanna spend that much, you can choose what is saved to the cloud. So let's go ahead and talk about the services that Mylio can work with today. So for smaller libraries, I highly recommend using either Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive. These are the two easiest clouds to connect to Mylio Photos. And I'm gonna show you how to do one of these here in a little bit. If you have a large library, and I'm gonna suggest that this is anything, you know, well over two terabytes and up, um, you might wanna consider using an S3 cloud storage. This is a more advanced setup required, a little bit more technical, it's totally doable, but using something like Backblaze B2, Wasabi, Amazon AWS, iDrive E2. There are several S3 protocol cloud storage companies out there. These are some of the most popular. Um, I'm personally a big fan of Backblaze, but these other ones also have really good reputations as well. So depending on the size of your library and the scalability, these are the options we have available to us today. Now, I've been debating whether or not to tease something else here for you. So in the not too distant future, we are going to have another option. I can't talk about it too much, um, but if you're in that large library category and you're on the fence about whether to sign up now or wait a little bit, a little bit to get something, I would say maybe wait about a month. And that's all I'm gonna say right there. So let's go ahead and move on. And one of the things we hear a lot is, well, what about Mylio Drive? So you say Mylio is not a cloud, but I see this thing called Mylio Drive. So Mylio Drive is a syncing service. That's primarily what it is. It holds your thumbnails, your catalog, and your optimized images. It does not hold your original quality files. The reason we have this set up today the way it is, is to facilitate syncing. So if you have multiple devices and you're out and about and you wanna to get to a better quality file from your phone, maybe your phone doesn't have a lot of storage, so all that's there natively is a thumbnail, Mylio Drive lets you get to the optimized higher quality version very, very quickly, as long as you have an internet connection. So it is kind of cloud, but it's not cloud storage in that I would think of it as a backup because it doesn't hold your originals. Um, the other thing to know with Mylio Drive is it's fully encrypted. So if you choose to enable Mylio Drive, again, this is optional. You don't have to use this, um, but if you choose to, to use it, it is free to use with Mylio Photos Plus. It is fully encrypted. So the only way to get to that data is through the Mylio Photos application, logged in with your Mylio account. Um, and it makes the syncing process much, much better. So that's a little bit about Mylio Drive and how that fits into this whole cloud scenario. 
So let's go ahead and talk about adding a cloud service in Mylio Photos. I'm going to jump over here to the app and we're going to go ahead and walk through adding Microsoft OneDrive together. Before we do that, I'm going to just jump over to my dashboard and show you what I have in my account currently. So I'm going to go to dashboard here on the left, devices, and then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here to the drives and clouds. Now you'll see I have a ton of devices here. A lot of this is because one, I'm a little bit paranoid. Two, I work for Mylio, so I demo a lot of different things. So there's a lot here that not necessarily the average person can have, but it does show that you can connect as many devices as you want to Mylio. So here's my Mylio drive. I do have that enabled. Right now it is downloading to one of my other devices, 22 optimized files. And my other cloud that I have here is I have Google Drive. I also have a Synology Vault here. This is a NAS device. We're not going to really get into NAS today. You can connect it similarly to a cloud. Um, that is an even more advanced setup. Um, so if you're not sure what a NAS is, it's probably not the right device for you because it is very technical to set up. But if you need to use a NAS, please know that you can do that and you can set it up with an S3 connection. So you basically create your own private cloud with your own NAS. So that's kind of cool. Again, it's a solution for somebody who has a really big library and needs that kind of device. But for most people, something like OneDrive and Google Drive are gonna do everything that you need. So I already have Google Drive added. What I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up to the top of my devices panel here, choose add, and I'm gonna choose cloud service. Now this is where you can choose between Google Drive, OneDrive, or that S3 compatible storage. So we talked about that, that was Backblaze B2, Wasabi, Amazon AWS, and so forth. Today I'm going to go ahead and add OneDrive. One thing to note about OneDrive is it only works with Mylio with personal accounts. If you have a business account or a corporate account, let's say you get some level of, um, you get a Microsoft subscription from your business, from the company you work for, that storage cannot be used as a Mylio vault. It's only the personal account. So something to keep in mind. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is do you wanna encrypt the files or not encrypt the files? So in general, I tell people that when you add a cloud service from the Mylio Photos application, this is not meant to be used on that cloud services um, servers natively. So I wouldn't, if I add Mylio, I do not suggest going into the OneDrive account on my website and browsing through the files there. Um, if you start moving things around and doing messing with things on the cloud service, it can actually cause catalog um, corruption and data issues. So I do recommend staying out of it. Um, another thing here is we have to encrypt or not to encrypt. So I do recommend for most people to encrypt your files, especially if you're using um, more free storage, like say Google Drive. This means that that company cannot see or do anything with those files. It's gonna see that files are there, but they're encrypted and the only way to decrypt them is through using Mylio Photos on one of your devices logged in with your account. If you choose do not encrypt my files, then this is where it's gonna be able, you're gonna be able to go into OneDrive on you know, your browser or however you access it, and you're gonna see the individual files. One thing to note is if you do choose this option, that cloud service is not going to reflect your file structure, your folder structure. Um, Mylio knows that that folder structure exists and if you need to rebuild from that cloud to a local vault, it will rebuild that. But basically, if you do choose to use something like OneDrive or Google Drive, use it with Mylio, don't use it independently of Mylio. So that's the best thing I can say about that. So in this case, I'm gonna choose to encrypt and choose continue. And that's gonna ask me to log into my Microsoft account. So I'll go ahead and say, yes, I wanna stay signed in. And it's analyzed my Mylio Photos library. We think where one drive should be set up as a vault. Now, if you have ample storage and depending on the size of your library, this is a great way to back up your entire library. Now, personally, I know I don't have that much OneDrive storage. I think I only have what comes free with my account, which is a very, very small amount. So in this case, I'm gonna choose a custom setup. And because I know I don't have much storage here, I'm just gonna choose catalog only. Now, for most people's usefulness, this isn't necessarily a great option. Um, highest rated is a nice one because that keeps all of your you know, five-star images and all your flagged images that you love. That'll keep just those, so it limits the amount of files that are uploaded. Um, you can also choose something like a travel backup. Um, for me, because I know this is a really tiny space, I'm gonna choose catalog. 
But if you're wanting to use this as offsite backup, Vault is going to be the way to go. So let me go ahead and continue with catalog only, say looks good. And that's going to go ahead and add OneDrive to my Milio account. Um, and it might be giving me an error because I've tried to do this before and I've quit it and I've come back. So that's probably why it's throwing an error. Um, but for most cases, what it's going to do at that point is just jump in, say, hey, it's successful. And it's going to show up down here under your drives and clouds. So very, very simple to set up. Um, you're going to go through a very similar process if you set it up using the S3 service. There are a few additional steps that you'll need to follow. They're in the manual. So if you go to manual.mileo.com, go to the section on adding a cloud service. Um, I'm sure Lori can go ahead and put that link into the chat for you. That's going to walk you through those additional steps that you have to go and set up on that service before you add it to Mileo. So it's a little bit more complex. It's not that hard, much easier than setting up a NAS. Um, one thing to note with the S3 services, so in this case, like I said, I have my Synology set up, that's my NAS, as my S3 connection. Right now you can only have one S3 service connected at a time. Hopefully that will change in the future. I'm, you know, it's one of those things where I keep thinking it's gonna be in a couple of months and then it keeps getting pushed farther out. So eventually we'll be able to add more than one, but for today you can only add one. So I used to have the Backblaze B2. When I got my NAS, I switched out and I'm using it now for my Synology. So that's how you do that. Let me go ahead and jump back over here to the presentation. And the next thing I wanna do is talk about creating a custom sync policy for cloud uploads. So this is where you can pick and choose what goes to your cloud. Um, I had a question in the community, I think it was just this morning, on I want to have a cloud service, but I wanna exclude a specific folder from being uploaded to the cloud. So that's what I'm actually gonna walk through right now. So there's a lot of different scenarios you can do to customize what goes up to your cloud services. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to my Google Drive. So I'm gonna go over to the All Photos view and open up my Quick Filters. You can go ahead and use almost all of these parameters. There's a couple that you can't use to use for sync policies, but you can use by folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and use by folder. And let's say I want to upload, um, I wanna exclude, I wanna exclude this cloud downloads folder. I already have them on the cloud somewhere else. I've downloaded them. I don't wanna necessarily put them back up. So let's say I wanna exclude this folder. I'm gonna click on the pin that selects all my cloud folders, but then I can go up here to the, to the, to the pill, right click on that and say exclude. So now it's showing everything in my library except that. Now what I can do is go here to my quick collections and save this as a new quick collection. And I can say um, no cloud downloads, which I think I might've already saved to test this. Yep, already in use. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I've already saved it. If I scroll down here to the bottom, there's my no cloud downloads. It's the exact same policy. And I can go ahead and close out of that now and jump back over to my dashboard, my devices. And let's say I wanna apply this to my Google Drive. I would select my Google Drive, go into Device Sync Policies, and under the Originals tab, you'll know there's nothing listed here. That's because the only thing going to this right now is catalog only. But let's say I want to sync everything in my library except that Cloud Downloads folder to this. That's where I'd go here to Add Quick Collection, and I would scroll down to No Cloud Downloads. There it is, there's my Quick Collection I just created, and choose Add. That's gonna add it to that list and start changing my sync policy for this device to where it'll be catalog only, and then also add in everything that fits this particular quick collection. Now, I don't wanna do this because I know I don't have enough space on my Google Drive to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and X that out so you can always change it later. The other thing I wanna point out here is we just changed that policy for our originals, but let's say we only wanna do that for optimized. You can do that as well. Right now I have it set to use the same policy as originals. I can untoggle that and I can add a policy just for my optimized images. Again, I could go back down to that no cloud downloads, choose add, and then that, that would update that sync policy. So I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, I don't have space there, so I'm gonna go ahead and X that out before I forget and cause a problem in my own account. But that's how easy it is to customize what is going to a specific cloud service. So you have full control of what goes there. You can control how much space is being used. 
Um, and that's really nice because a lot of other cloud services, pretty much every other cloud service out there, their goal is to get you to put everything up in the cloud. Mylio prioritizes your local storage, and then you can put in the cloud only the things you want to. So some other scenarios might be, you wanna put in up only your edited images, or maybe that's where you wanna put only your raw images. Um, you might wanna keep only your very favorites, so those four and five stars, you go through your family history albums, you have your picks, your curated part of your life, those are the best ones. Those are the ones you wanna make sure are protected offsite. There's many, many different ways you can group and decide what you wanna save online and go ahead and work with it that way. So lots of choice. With that, I wanna wish you guys a wonderful weekend. Hope you get to uh, make some memories, add some pictures to your Milio. And if you're enjoying this program, please be sure to share your love of Milio with your family and friends. We love getting personal referrals. Um, Join us in the community, ask your questions. Lori and I are in there quite frequently answering. So with that, I'll wish you guys a great rest of your day and we will see you next time. Bye everyone.